Jesus says, Worry and fear is useless. Trust me, do I not have complete control over the whole universe? October 12, 2015 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Claire began, Lord, thank you for being with us tonight and for giving us the weapons we need against the enemy when he attacks us with fear and anxiety. The Lord bless you, heart dwellers. He gives us a really good teaching tonight to help us to be strong against attacks that are going to come up. There have been some things on my heart and mind today. I made some decisions today and we took some action on some things and there's also been some change in the air. Lord, what do you want to say to us tonight? Not to worry. Will you stop worrying? Is that what this is, Lord? I've been feeling so insecure. It is so vague. I haven't been able to discover where it is coming from. But we made some decisions and moved forward today. Yes, that's what it is. I'm with you. You have done the right thing and I will bless it. But you need to trust me on this and stop worrying. Well, part of this is the owners of the property that we've been living in for 14 years now have come back into our radar. They are wanting to retire here and they are preparing the front house, which needed a bathroom, and planning on moving back in. Eventually, they will want this house too. But we have lived here for 14 years now and invested a great sum of money in repairs and improvements, in hopes that we could buy it from them someday. But they don't seem to be interested and in any case, we don't really have anything to offer them anyway. But I've gone to the Lord with this because we are so established here and this place is so perfect for us and the neighborhood has changed a lot since we've been here. The Lord told me that he had this under control, so I've been struggling to trust him every day. I see those workers come in and work on the bathroom and I know it's only going to be a matter of time before they move in there. And I'm worried and I have to continually put that worry down and trust in the Lord. So he said, And you worry? Yes, Lord, I am worried. Worry and faith cannot coexist. You need to stop worrying and start trusting me, that I'm with you and you are in my will and this is in my control. At that point, I thought, I need a confirmation. I called Ezekiel and said, Honey, I need a word from the Lord. Am I on the right track here? And he opened the Bible promises to Holy Spirit. It can't get better than that. So I said, Okay, this is the Lord. Then the Lord started speaking again, and he said, My dearest, I will not let you stumble and fall. I will not disappoint. I'm directing both of you because your hearts are bent upon my will. In all things, I have my reasons. Now I do wish to speak about trust. This is far too rare among my brides. My dear ones, by association you are so exposed to the world, not that you choose to be rather out of necessity. 
So you must guard your hearts even more that the thoughts and the fears of the world don't seep in and color your feelings. Fear is the number one tool of the enemy. Fear and its response, worry, are rife in this world. To combat them, you must be vigilant, more vigilant. It's the little foxes that spoil the wine. If the enemy can get you to worry just a little about one thing, without you noticing what it is, he can every so often find another thing, and another, and pretty soon he has you established in a habit of worry and of fear. Your poor mother, she was a real worrier. Worry is what put her in her grave. In fact, worry is a primary factor in aging. And I was thinking to myself when he said that, Oh Lord, are you sure this is you? He continued and said, If there were any such thing as a fountain of youth, it would be producing rivers of trust. And this is what I come to offer you. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on me. And when he said that, I decided to look up the scripture so I could put it on here for you. And this is what it said. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Know him in all your ways and he makes all your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And this was the clincher, guys. This really got me. It is healing to your soul and mostening to your bones. And then the Lord laughed and he said, Gotcha. You see, you didn't trust me even with this simple word. You were thinking, fountain of youth? Am I hearing things? But I got you. I had to smile. Yes, indeed, you got me, Lord. You caught me in the act of unbelief right here. Good. That is the second confirmation you've had of me tonight. Would you please relax? Okay. Thank you. Now, back to our topic, worry. Worry is useless. What is needed is faith. How can my bride handle this onslaught of anxiety? With faith and trust in me. I have come through before. I will come through again. I am the God of breakthroughs. If I wish for a planet to disappear, it bursts into pieces and flies through the universe in shattered remnants. If I wish to change the orbit of another, I notch it ever so slightly and it spins off in another direction. If I wish for the day to break, I raise up the sun, and when I've had enough, I put it to sleep again. Do I not have complete control over the elements? But then I say to man, here is your earth, live on it, Then I watch and wait to see what man does. And when the time is ripe, I take it back and renew it in the splendor I had created it in. I remove the dissenters, the troublemakers, and turn it over to the righteous and the meek. Then I give them godly wisdom to administrate it. When wicked men choose to start trouble, I thwart them. They must wait until I choose to unleash them. When my children and my brides turn to me with repentant hearts, I extend mercy and time to them. Though the wicked ones gnash their teeth, they must wait still longer. It is by my decision that wars are begun, and by my intervention wars are finished. Don't you see how in control I truly am? So, why do you let little things, like where you will live, what you will eat and what you will wear, 
trouble you? In the scope of things, these are foolish worries, truly the very things the pagans lust after. Rather concern yourselves with fulfilling my will and all righteousness. When you see the naked and poor, be like my father to them, clothe and feed and meet their needs. Do you not know that to the degree you care for my needs, I will care for yours? Do you know why some receive miracles and others don't? There are many reasons, but one is that some take care of others and some take care of only themselves. Those who care for others take a special place in my heart and at the appropriate times I break forth with a miracle for them. You have noticed this because I've drawn your attention to it, Claire. I would almost say to you, my brides, if you have not been about my business, you should be more concerned for yourselves, except that I do not deny you access to my mercy. I am hoping that as I reveal my mercy to you more and more, you will become more and more like me, reaching out with mercy to those who are hurting around you. Oh, there are so many dynamics you are not aware of. But when I see a soul who within their heart carries infinite trust in me, I cannot deny them what is right for them. They have drawn from my wellsprings of mercy with their vessel of trust, and the larger the vessel, the more mercy they obtain. So you right now have in your possession the weapon of all weapons. Jesus, I trust in you. Say this from the heart every single time the enemy insinuates anxiety and fear. Yes, this will be your breakthrough confession. Repeat it often, totally ignoring the demon's remarks. You will, in fact, cause them much anxiety and confusion. I started to laugh at that point. Yes, you may laugh about it. It is funny. Yes, Lord, I can just hear them jumping up and down, red in the face, screaming. Didn't you just hear me? You're going to lose your job. You're going to die of cancer. Your wife is going to leave you. God won't help you. You're a sinner. And your proper response is complete deafness to their lies and a simple confession to me. Jesus, I trust in you. End of story. This is your weapon, my brides. Is it too simple? Are you looking for something more intellectually and biblically sound? I'm sorry if I've disappointed some of you. But it's time to slay the dragon on the battlefield with one simple swipe of your sword. All the reasoning in the world will only confuse you. Don't you think the devils are very clever with reasoning? I tell you, they are. What they don't have or understand is faith. It is completely foreign to them, and yet it defeats them every single time. Yes, the mere faith of a mustard seed puts an end to their most intricate plans. Even the plans of the mighty are thwarted by the faith of the simplest believer, with the mind of a child. So I've given you mighty weapons of warfare. Go forth, wielding your faith and discouraging the onslaught, and we will have the victory. I am with you.